Now, the typical stepper motor has an angle of 1.8 degrees per step. And this means that for every step pulse provided by your pulse generator or your software, the motor will rotate 1.8 degrees. Now, microstepping generally gives you greater positional accuracy. Microstepping drivers divide the electrical step into smaller steps to increase the positional accuracy and provide smoother, quieter operation. Microstepper, microstepping drivers come in various step accuracies, quarter stepping, eighth stepping, tenth stepping, sixteenth stepping. Quarter stepping is four microsteps per step, meaning you would require four pulses to go 1.8 degrees. In eighth stepping, you would require eight pulses to go 1.8 degrees of rotation. Tenth stepping, obviously tenth, step, tenth steps. 16 stepping, obviously 16 steps. Now, microstepping is absolutely a superior way to go than full stepping. However, there is a cost associated with that. When using a microstepping driver, the stepper motor driver requires more step pulses to go the same rotational distance as with non-microstepping drivers. For example, a 1 8 stepping stepper motor driver requires 8 pulses to cause the motor to go 1.8 degrees of rotation. A full stepping require, driver only requires one pulse. Now, that's generally not a problem with the commonly available software such as Mach 3 CNC because Mach 3 is capable of putting out probably 45,000 pulses per second, which is a much greater uh, than most than you would generally need. Okay. Step and direction pulses. There are many types of drivers on the market today. Most manufactured of, manufacturers have standardized the interface to a typical step and direction interface, which basically means that you need two signals to drive a standard stepper motor driver. You need a step signal and a direction signal. The step signal is a series of pulses. Generally, they're TTL level pulses, which means 5 volts at X number of milliamps, generally 10 milliamps. Um, the direction signal is also a TTL level pulse. The step signal is a series of pulses. For each pulse, it moves the motor a specific increment. The direction signal is either high or low. High meaning the motor will go one direction, low meaning it will go the opposite direction. Now, Good stepper motor drivers have optical isolation to protect the driver circuitry in the event that a high voltage electrical impulse comes back from the motor winding. Since stepper motors are in fact a coil, they do have an inductive kickback. They can generate spikes which can cause damage to the computers driving them. So most manufacturers include optical isolation, which gives you up to 5000 volts of isolation. Okay. Another characteristic to, to uh, consider when sizing your motors is the amount of torque required. Now, stepper, motor rate, uh, stepper motors are generally rated in holding torque, but don't be fooled by holding torque. Holding torque is defined as the amount of torque that can be applied to the motor shaft when the motor is energized without the shaft moving. That means when the motor is at rest. For instance, if I have a 260 ounce inch motor, by definition, when that motor is at rest, at its rated nameplate current, I can put 260 ounce inches of torque on the motor shaft and the motor should not slip. That rating is very different from dynamic torque. The dynamic torque is the torque available to cause a change in the motion after the rotor is moving. Okay. Let's talk about that for a minute. Say I have a router, gantry, a gantry router table, and I'm using a stepper motor on the x-axis. Say I'm using a 400 ounce inch motor. Okay. When the table is not moving, I can apply a certain amount of force on the gantry, which would be equivalent to my 400 ounce inches without impacting or without moving that gantry. Now, 
Dynamic torque is a little bit different. That means I'm already moving and I need to accelerate or decelerate. Now, the dynamic torque is not 260 ounce inches if you have a 260 ounce inch motor. It's generally much less than that. You need to go to the torque speed curves to determine at what what amount of current or what amount of torque is available at a specific speed. Now, there's a couple of rules of thumb. Number one, a stepper motor generally does not perform well above five revolutions per second or 300 revolutions per minute. When you calculate out the size of the stepper motor you need, um, it is a good practice to go 50% higher to prevent missing steps. Now the reason for that is if you run calculations and you come out and you say, okay, I need a 300 ounce inch motor for my application, that assumes that every variable in your formulas was exactly correct. Um, now, for instance, when you size a stepper motor for a gantry of a, of a router table, okay, you'll know the type of bearings that you have, the type of lead screw or transmission that you have, you'll know the weight of the table, and you'll do your calculation to determine what's the maximum speed I want to run this system at and when you plug those variables in it will say you need X amount of torque to get that performance. Now that assumes that everything is in specification meaning your bearings are new. As bearings age they don't perform as well. That's why you go a little bit higher to prevent missing steps. Now as we talked about earlier higher voltages on the stepper motor will give better performance you'll see on a later slide that running a stepper motor at 24 volts will give you one torque speed curve. If you increase the voltage to 40 volts you get a significantly better torque speed curve. So again higher voltages will give better performance but you can't exceed the motor voltage capability which we'll talk about a little later. Okay here is the a typical torque speed curve this torque speed curve is for the Stepper 3 Econostep S23HT260S motor, which is one of our best selling motors. You'll see at 1.25 uh, revolutions per second, we get approximately 190 ounce inches of dynamic torque available. Now, again, the dynamic torque is torque available to accelerate or decelerate the system. The holding torque of this motor is 2.6 or 260 ounce inches. At 2.5 revolutions per second, you can see we're down to approximately 140 ounce inches of torque. At 5 revolutions per second, we only get roughly 65 to 70 ounce inches of torque. Now, for every torque speed curve, uh, they will give you the conditions, the manufacturer will give you the conditions at which that torque speed curve was was done. And the reason for that is again voltage plays uh, a significant impact. The type of driver used. In our case here this was done with a half stepping driver with a 24 volt DC bus voltage at the rated current of 2.8 amps per phase. Now a little later in the presentation I'm going to show you um, an applied motion products motor and I'm going to show you two different voltages and how that impacted the torque speed curve. Okay, another important criteria for a stepper motor is the rotor inertia. Um, inertia is defined as a system that is in motion wants to stay in motion and that is no different for a stepper motor system. Because the rotor has mass therefore it has rotational inertia. Many designers find rotor inertia plays a major role in performance de degradation. Why is that? When you want your system to move you want it to get to its speed as quickly as you can and reduce speed as quickly as you can. That makes the system perform faster. Now as you get a bigger motor 